Good day, everybody, and welcome. This is Pastor T, the overseer, founder, leader of the Apostolic Ministry, the uh, Cross Body Unity Movement for Everybody. It's an open ended movement, no members, no joining. It's seeing the fruit of it. We'll talk about that later on going. But the idea is that nobody knows it all. I don't know it all, but we're just going to put together the picture and the pace at which we've gone since the Lord called me to study the body of Christ as a pastor, servant leader, pastor's daughter back in the day when I was in my 20s in 1976, and it was right at the beginning of the epic charismatic music renewal, which is very soft, low-key, no, not heard of, but it was gentle as it came in, following like the cusp of the end, you know, like Billy Graham era, makes Jesus people, later Vineyard, but also the charismatic renewal, which means the Catholics and the and that's what I feel now. I feel like that's where I'm needed because, listen, people are being overwhelmed, smothered with the false doctrine and true, but also well intentioned, uh, mainly famous and charismatic from TV, not all. I support the people and for a lot of it, but I think we've got to just pull back and appreciate, respect the fruit of our neighbors. I've never in my life been so thankful for denominational servant leader, charismatics as well, but people who really know the Lord, that know the heart of the Lord. You can have the pure heart of the Lord, not have all your doctrine right, not move in the Holy Ghost and swing from the rafters. I can do that, but I'm going to be careful and watchful because it's more important to know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. One reason I'm here in these sunglasses, usually I'm pretty tired. <laughs> the other part is I'm really tired and I think, man, i got to do it all. I, I really could use quality, God-sent help to be my peripheral behind the scenes. It's been a while, a low road, and that we needed it, I guess, but I didn't know what this function was in Charismatica until the last 20 years, in growing showbiz. So even though I'm bemoaning that, I'm grateful for them. A lot of it has been very helpful, especially good teaching that you can get from the the other kind of things, and I'm for teaching it now, Holy Spirit, Book of Acts, Bible as well, pick up your cross, suffering servant as well, getting the future church ready, the bride of Christ, so we can get along at least, not scream at people, not jump people and be ambushed, I'll have to tell you about those times, just for showing up as a visitor, not a Cretan, <laughs> so we'll tell you, one reason I know God used this person especially for the crowd I just mentioned, I just escaped from as their stereotype. That I am the stereotype that was sent to provoke my spirit, my DNA, my diversity, which doesn't look like I should be, but I am, but I have it on me. I'm not spooky spiritual, but I stir that up, the accuser. So if I come incognito, so to speak, on this film, it's so I can share, and then if somebody comes, when another lady that looks like this comes, they'll think it's me, these kind of misogynists, these kind of dysfunctional 2 Timothy 3, 1 through 5 fruit characterless people, subgroups, not all, then that way they'll, they'll think it's me and be on their best behavior. So this is why. So I'm going to really try and work hard not to have it long on this channel, Cross the Unity. I'm real letting it really go long because I've got a in between dysfunction and getting free up here in the South Carolina, North Carolina border, which I really respect. And so I was letting it all hang out to really get all the doctrine. I'm going to call this, make it more concise, try to make it a podcast, like two to eight minutes, let's say. Not my face on there, but just to have what I was found in my discovery. So I was sent, never having been around accusation. Christianity and parenting and no backstabbing, no racism. I'd never heard gossip. I'd never heard people complaining. And this was before that I was growing up in my parents' pastor's home. Grandparents were noble Korean Bible scholars. I never heard of all this dysfunction because I wasn't raised around it. It was only God's mercy. So in the background, I can think, well, you know, if I hear dysfunction going to church, trying to fellowship and please God and want to go, 
Hebrews 10.25, if I get, wow, warfare. Warfare for showing up is the wrong type, the wrong spirit. They read your vibes. This cluster group, a big group. When I go toward the book of Acts. So we have pulled out. We forgive them. Hey, we're not offended. They would like to know you think they are. But we are representing the new future, a future church who's not going to look all alike. Some people have never been to church. Some people want to go. Some people are black people who have a special call who have been also jumped. I had, let me tell you this, in Dallas, when I really started getting strong to teach on it against it, I had been to a famous mega revivalist big church. And I wanted to find community. I just wanted to help. I just wanted to be there and they had good worship. So I went. So I went the first time and he wasn't there. He's now dead. So he, I went the first time in 2006 or seven and um, in Dallas. And I went there and he wasn't there, the head person, the head Christian pastor. And all the people were like the first church that night. There was worship. They came over to me. They prophesied. And I'll never forget it. They said, Tebo, we know God has sent you to this area with a word for the pastors and leaders. And I was like, yes, because I was sent. I still am sent to Dallas. But I'm not sent to have to live there in that spirit, that region of Christianity ministry. So we can still be their sin. We love them. All right, for the pure in heart that are out there. So then when I went back the next time, two times again, I was just going to say hi, because I'd been in ministry all my life for decades, and my own ministry, not my dad's, my own. And it depends upon your doctrinal group, is what this is. I could go to a black person, oh, hi, Tebo, like you're a normal person, that's all I want. Go to a vineyard, oh, hi, you know, nice to meet you, Baptist, Methodist, that's Catholic, you know, oh, they're just people, because they're, they're not into whatever that is, that spirit. So I went there as a test case to learn this, to address it, to deliver it for all of us and to make all the strangers that look like us. All right, so let me tell you how it got to the black people, but I always think of you, the black person, the dark-skinned person, the atypical person that I go. So I went back and the head person, the head minister, apostle, prophet, teacher, pastor, whatever he was, really, you know, wonderful life he led. So I went back and I was just going to say hello because it was a quiet time. There he was. I thought, let me say, I'm a new visitor, blah, 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 from Virginia, expat. I walked up and that same religious spirit that I'm sent to tame, the wealth, the biblical patron, whatever, it flared up and he wouldn't, he pulled back and he flinched. He had the deer in the headlights look. I went, whoa. Oh, no, that spirit is here that I provoke. I, I'm its litmus test. If it ain't there, it doesn't do it. I have a great time, but if it's there, it knows me. It's a spirit, demonic spirit, a false religion. So if I'm there, it'll rise up. It accuses without speaking. So I tried it one more time. I thought, you know, I'm really, you know, overcoming. Let's because I love the man, you know, in, in Christ. Let's go back. I went one more time and happened again. With that, I had a friend trying to find a board member. I had a couple who were my friends that were out there in ministry, and he was a black bishop. And the black bishop has gone on to be with the Lord, but he was not famous bishop, you know. But he was at the grassroots where he could meet new people. And he was Pentecostal. See, I'm a Pentecostal. I wasn't raised Pentecostal. I wasn't raised charismatic. I'm just a Baptist, a believer who found all about the Holy Spirit, good, bad, and not so great. So I can hang with energy or not. I like, I little, need a little fire here and there, you know. But I'm pretty tame at the Bristol Fellowship level, pretty calm, rational. So I went back and I commiserated. I said, you know, all I did was walk in and wanted to find friends and be, a, you know, attend the ministry, and I just say hello, and the spirit manifests. So I told the bishop, and he said, he did that to me when I came over there. So it's a spirit against a 
get the Holy Spirit freedom without control. I don't know. It's just, it is something that is not right. So I'm addressing it because it's been on a, I'm diagnosing it. I'm making it like a, what in the world is owning the wells, the charismatic wells of the Holy Spirit? And see, for causing all the collective dysfunction I found in 2012, I really, Lord said, get out of being a charismatic. Because I had been a charismatic from 86 in ministry, Christian ministry through Assembly of God, who were not acting like that. Studied the body of Christ, went around the nation as the Lord led me to different you know, different groups who had outpourings of kind, revivals and word of faith in Tulsa, and different in Missouri and Florida many times in Dallas, 15 years of discovery. <laughs> and so up here in Fort Mill, been to Charlotte, North Carolina, South Carolina before, different places as the Lord would lead me. And I'm going to tell that in a concise journey. This is the long version. I'm going to make it short so you can get, not have to take too much time. So when I didn't know all this, and life was really happier before, now I'm happy now because I had to understand it, diagnose it, realize it, attra it attacks the remnant. It's attacking females alone because I was, I never feel alone. I never got it when a man was beside me. A black person has never done it. A charismatic, soft-spoken person has never done it. This has got a lot to do with Levitical patriarchism and ownership, like a slave master, money, and I guarding the turf. So I come in like, all I want to do is hear God. You know? So we forgave him, but because it's so big, it is so big and it has showbiz attached to it, we are not being small about it. We are trying to break that Jezebel spirit, fault finding for the new move of God. For everybody to be able to go and worship where they feel the most to go and not have, they feel like Jesus is their friend and so is the minister. So cross body unity is going to diagnose and trace doctrinally and replace it. Call it, you know, the old, there's some kind of theology out there, replacement theology. Well, I'm not doing that. I'm going to replace fault finding, defragging accusations and leadership in Christian ministry. So right now, I want you to know from the fact that we love them, we forgave them, but until they quit and repent from this witchcraft, this crossed over, I can go as I have many times, until they repent from it and seek the Lord first in his name before theirs or anybody else's, I will address it. Once they quit and it stops in their leadership, their staff, their follower, their covenant behavior, cut cult-like at times. I'll just stop. It will not be needed, needed. All right. So just realize that. Other than that, I'm fine. This is part of what people are not accustomed to in the United States. This is part of my call, which I didn't know it ended up being like this. Back in the 80s, when I got the call for ministry, the Bible appeared in my spirit, open to 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17. The Bible is inspired word of God, profitable for it instruction, doctrine, correction, and reproof so that the man and woman of God would be thoroughly furnished. So I did not end up with this, reproving, correcting, and also adjusting, you know, let's teach a little bit of hero-like Jesus respect, multicultural diverse, and all that. So I'm going to, because we know the framework of ministry, teaching Christian ministry, we want to make sure that we're not going to say we're going to not we're not going to be a cult. If I teach on the spirit of prophecy, the office of prophecy, we're not going to be all white because I believe Jesus was a Middle Eastern Hebrew prophet. So is Paul. We're trying to bake it organic. We're trying to clean up accusation, dysfunction, and make it so that everybody can hear God. It, and I'm submitting this not as dogma. Not as autocratic, not as controlling domination. This is Holy Spirit Siva. The ball, like a tennis ball, is being lobbed respectfully into your court. Even if I sound feisty, passionate, you know, I'm trying to, you know, the Bible teaches me, blessed are the pure in heart, they shall see God. Well, if you or I or any minister is not pure in heart, we have ulterior motives. 
we're the big boss. We've never even met Jesus. We're not like childlike faith. We're suspicious and ornery and cunning and manipulating and money-centered demons. Ostentatious. You will not have the full counsel of God. Maybe you'll be off. So how can I trust? Blessed are the pure in heart. They shall see God. What if we're prophets and we're like that? Or a prophetess? Or an apostle? Or a bishop? And you're mean? Or your people, the fruit you keep producing is occult? Right? This is the term that I was sent to discover since 19, the bicentennial of America, 1976, Berlin. And we are pro it, the body of Christ, when you can find it under the layers of Israel. So please do forgive me if I hurt your feelings. But it is past time to worry about your kind if you are owning the wells that you should be. No, if you've got mixture. We are pro the new crowd, whether you never go to a church, whether you're wondering who Jesus really is in ministry, we are pro you. That's why we're here online where nobody has to hear you except you and God. You get to hear what's true and false. Be a noble Berean that would make Apostle Paul and your mama or daddy proud. Whether you're black, white, green, I've had urban, suburban, Vietnamese, I've had all cultural types of, you know, ministry hands on quality experiences that were like this. So we can tell the difference. But I will say this, I do have a vibe that is cross-cultural. And it comes from somewhere in my background that I'm very cross-cultural. I can hang out with all kinds of types and vibes and rhythms, and I do have, I'll be honest, I've got a natural rhythm, syncopated and lively, I do. So I can samba with the best, and I can dance before the Lord, or I can be plain old quiet, liturgical, whatever. The need is Paul said, Paul's my mentor, one of my big mentors in the last few years. Follow me only if I follow Christ. Mine is don't do it if the Lord didn't tell you to do it. If I say it or anybody says it, don't do it unless the Bible and God say to do it. That's how we're operating at Cross Body Unity. So part of the cross at Cross Body Unity is you do take up your cross. You do take of your cross. This is not easy. This is not playtime. This is not the chef handing out the food and you just sit and dine. Now you might, but not how we live it. You want to live it this time. You want to be the real deal. So we're not trying to do mesmerizing, charlatan, ostentatious, and we want it to be our boast in the Lord. One of the real reasons I'm pointing this out is that if this person is the maverick to the dysfunctional, but the calm friend, joyful leader to the non-dysfunctional and black and white, you know the difference, but we, you know, just the fruit of the reaction. This helps me with my discernment, but it helps me grow cross-culturally and notice the doctrine in the people. I was sent as an embed till now to be out in the fruit of the last generation move, even though I'm their you know, peer type person. I knew many people before Dallas. I had a area, you know, area wide national ministry. But we were not sent to be famous because we want it to be Jesus move. And I will tell you for showing up knowing the Lord and the anointing as an apostle, I have never had to deal with so much jealousy for showing up and some of these talented and gifted, brilliant, bright, educated saints. I have never. So this is a pitfall. We're teaching some of the things that will block your harvest for your truth. Really and if it takes you getting puffy and, oh, poor me, she's just so mean, well, then too bad. It's more important to please God. But it's more important to have people want to come in and you're well-rounded, at least pretend to be normal. You want to have one foot on the ground. That's what I found. I can teach high in this. I can teach Holy Spirit. I love to get in the Holy Spirit if I can find it. But I keep always as a human person. I think I'm respectful 
discerning of those around me in a fellowship, in a meeting, in a pastor's gathering by myself, in the wrist of fellowship. I keep one foot on the ground, maybe two feet on the ground, to be pragmatic and realistic at all times. This is why we need, a, I think we need a, a happy balance to be joyful, but know how to tone it down and be just normal and natural and let the Lord, you know, take it easy. There's a balance, but only God can tell you if you're listening, if you really want to do it well. Be yourself. Maybe you're more bold, maybe you're more quiet. You're doing it to please one person, the audience again, not your fellow saint, not your fellow Christian, or anybody else. So we are going to teach wholesome, healthy, and try to get rid, minimize the evil eye. I can teach theology about that to help them address, yes, there is the realm of the Holy Spirit, the prophets fear. I deal with that. I don't like that. But you don't hurt people. You don't use witchcraft to do it. Fault finding. Our size is good. You look at the seer flaws from the moment you step on the property or if you meet them in a restaurant. There they are. It is that warped doctrine that I'm really coming out to. If you can have a spirit of prophecy. One of the things that prophecy is, you got to know that it's not all your kind. There are different realms and flows and different attributes to the gift because some are more Baptist and some are more white and some are more black. They have a different ethnic background. You can have Holy Spirit, but we're really watching out. Watching out to be sober in it, not conflicted or, or charlatan, mesmerizing, or plate. You've got to have the gift, but you've got to know the giver of the gift more than you're giving. You've got to have the gift, yeah, if, if that's your call. But you've got to know the gift giver better and be mature and loving. What does it say in Pauline, Ephesians 3.19? That's for me too. I have to watch it all the time. To know the love of Christ, which passes knowledge. To know the love of Christ, and see, Paul writes so many things from the back in the day. He didn't know, he did prophesy the last days, the perilous last days, and we're living in them. But to know the love of God, the passing on, the love of Christ, that means in the last days we're filled with knowledge, knowledge puffs up, love builds up, edifies. We're going to all work on it, because we're all seers, theologians. Bible scholars, mothers, daddies, teenagers, everybody's read it all, done it all, you know, with all the internet. So we forgive you. You forgive me, I'll forgive you. But we got to work on this so we can have it even keel. We can have it without Jesus' love is more important than our skill, our pride, and who we are, and what we've overcome, and all this stuff. All that stuff is low. Like the love of God, to know the love of God, that passes skill, wells of knowledge, educational degrees, or lack of educational degrees. It is, to me, it's about God. So I want to give him glory. And I want to thank God for all the good quality ministries, including the wealth and wealth, who have been there from far away or up close, where I've watched the good fruit and participated as the Lord had, had sent me. I had been part of um, Word of Faith, starting out in ministry. I'm not my whole family, background, parents who are Presbyterians, Baptists, no one cared about your brand. So that's what fits me to be, you know, like this. But we didn't care what kind of school you went to or if you went to school. We didn't care where you graduated. I still don't. I really don't care. Uh, we want to know who you really are and your fruit. That's really what we want. All right, and then I don't care if you're Baptist, Black Baptist, American, whatever, Native American, I don't really care. I'm going to see really what underneath your earth suit, who is in there. That's all I really am looking for. You know? So you can have great pedigrees and doctrines, but the Lord took me this. You know how the Lord took me? When Dad, my father, my senior, and I came from very educated people. And so there were teachers and scholars and business people and theologian type people, you know, down-to-earth people. 
But when my father died, he was a ordained seminary graduate from Louisville, Kentucky Seminary School. And he died, and my mother and sister prayed, what does God want? And they both were since they had met the Holy Spirit, and they met the Holy Spirit, not my dad, but everybody else. So the Lord led them to Word of Faith, which is Rayma up in Bible College and Oral Roberts University. I was in Virginia, married and a child, and involved in ministry, my own ministry, which is all kinds, not one kind, but I was also you know, feeling led toward learning Word of Faith, really, at the time. And so I would travel up there, and I'd get to visit and see the headquarters and all that you know, thing, which is good. So then I'd come back. And so when I'd come back, it was the thing in the 80s. It was the thing in ministry around my town, Richmond area, as a younger minister and as a you know, called person like so many, so many of the day, which are still out there. I said, Lord, you want me to go to Bible college? You want me to go to seminary? Like them, you know? Right? And the Lord said, nope. And he gave me a scripture. And he said, you will have no need that any man can teach you, but the Holy Spirit will be your teacher. And that is it. Now, I will say this. I had great heritage. I had great people on TV, like many of you. You know, all these people. I didn't know these people up front. And then after a while, I was never just one kind. I was always a school of learning from this kind, the Holy Spirit kind, the Bible kind, the Baptist kind. But to me, after all that, I think it's despairing that we can't figure out who Christ is now at any, almost any time. Who is he really? Where is the faith? I'm not in any kind of movement, and I'm not putting any movement down. I'm not talking about the top people either that pioneered that. I give them honor. I understand what happened after TV and fame, showbiz and money morphed all the followers, including you know myself. We got to work on. I'm not angry with you. I'm not mad. I'm not putting them down. But I think we got to know for the younger crowd, for anybody that's out of church, and you got the freedom not to ever go until God tells you. But you got to be careful. But you've got to know who's real and who's true, and how you're gonna and read his word and then get some a network of safe people to ask questions. So we're working on that and that's why Cross Refugees is for anybody to hear God at Selah, not Dogma. And we're more interested on your fruit. Your fruit. The fruit of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace, patience, goodness, meekness, self-control. And abiding in James 3.17 like resembling the wisdom of God. Myself included in so these basic things I'll teach on, but not so lengthy. James 3.17 is a standard for relationships. Even under pressure, marriage, home, family, relationships, friends, fellowship. James 3.17, and leadership. To know the love of Christ, but also that one, another one, but James 3.17 says that the wisdom that comes from the high, from a pastor, leader, a gathering, a person, is first of all, if they're a Christian, pure, peaceable, easily entreated, full of mercy and good fruit without partiality, without a 